Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to build a tighter integration between your HubSpot CRM and Clay. And so, as you know, uh, Clay has its native integration with uh, HubSpot, but uh, it doesn't go super in depth. And so you're able to look up companies and contacts and so forth, but uh, you're not, you don't have sort of the level of control or granularity that you might need um, in order to ensure that what you do inside of Clay um, fits the architecture that you've built inside of HubSpot. And so I'll use uh, this real world example. This is from a project that I worked with, um, with Evan Dunn from ServiceBell. Uh, we built sort of a, an outbound architecture and you know it's a pretty complex um, setup across five different tables. So I'm just gonna focus on this part here. But um, for ServiceBell, the, the basic context is that they have a lot of companies in their CRM, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we should exclude them in their outbound. The reason being that uh, many of these companies have actually never been contacted, uh, but they're in there for one reason or another. And so what we wanted to do was um, we wanted to go further than just seeing whether a company existed in their CRM. We actually wanted to see if there was an active deal associated um, with each company, right? And so um, had, if we had stopped at just seeing whether the company existed, we would have excluded a whole bunch of companies, right? When actually they're, they're fair game for outbound and we can drive um, more deals through this. And so what we did was first we looked up um, using the native integration inside of Clay. We looked up the company based on their URL domain um, and you're able to get their um, ID, right? This ID is uh, the ID that is unique and identifies the company inside of your HubSpot instance. And so this is the ID that we need. And so that's why we ran this column here. And if the company exists, um, then we decided to look for um, an active deal that is associated with them. Now, in order to run these custom queries against your HubSpot, you need to create a private app inside of HubSpot. And so here we created a private app um, under integrations uh, and Really, um, all a private app does is it uh, sets the right amount of access privileges uh, for whatever um, for for the access token that you that you get, right? And you can you can take this access token and use it in your app or in Clay or, or in Make Zapier wherever, right? But you get an access token with the right amount of scope um, to access the data that you have inside of HubSpot. For this specific project, we didn't need any write access. So you can see that everything ends in read. Uh, we just needed to be able to read the data on companies and deals and so forth to see whether it exists, right? Um, and so we uh, limited the scope pretty tightly uh, to ensure that just in case the access token gets leaked or whatever it is, um, whoever, um, there won't be, like it won't, it won't get abused, right? Um, so once we've created that, you get uh, your access token. And with your access token, you're able to then look at, let's see. Uh, with your access token, you're able to run a custom H HTTP API call um, to fetch associated deals. And so um, if you go to HubSpot's uh, developer docs under CRM, um, under CRM here, you can see a whole bunch of different endpoints that you can find. So in this case, we're looking at uh, searching CRM objects. And so the one that we're looking at is uh, this one, deal search. So we're looking for deals, right? Um, and the... Hubs oh, sorry. HubSpot also has its own querying language where you can actually specify um, sort of the filters that you want to run on your search. And so in this case, we're looking at any deals where the associated company is equal to the ID that we pulled from this um, from this column before, right? And it returns uh, values if it does find deals and we pull that out into this column here. And if there are no deals and you know, this column is blank. Um, I just want to show you what uh, that would look like. So if you look here, you can see right here, um, the mo there is a deal that is associated with this company. Uh, and so based on this information, we can actually take out um, this company, uh, exclude this company from uh, from the outreach campaign. Um, but uh, there's another step here, which is that we want to be able to um, fetch the deal label, right? Because 12862047 doesn't mean much to us. Um, we actually want to be able to translate it into uh, something that we can understand. And that stands for uh, existing stuck pipeline. Um, and so that's sort of how um, we were able to pull more details on a company, uh, see where, where they were in the deal stage uh, to determine whether we should or should not reach out to this company. Another thing that I wanted to show you um, was here. Um, so another thing that we did again is uh, we ran another HTTP API module to get the owner ID. Um, so every deal has an owner, right? And so we want to see who the um, owner was. And then based on this information, we were able to pull this back into um, either creating a new company or updating an existing company. And so that for those, we use the native integrations that Clay has. Uh, but for this uh, getting the owner ID, we again had to use the private app access because uh, there wasn't an easy way um, or there, there wasn't a way to get this information uh, using just the native integrations. So um, yeah, to wrap up, um, I 
believe that working out of your CRM as a single source of truth is really important. And um, you obviously don't want to be uh, doing cold outbound to companies uh, that you might already be having conversations with, right? It just doesn't look very professional. Also, um, it might confuse your prospect. Um, and so I would make sure that um, you build these uh, like similar systems, right? Where um, you don't just stop at looking at the company because again, that excludes a lot of companies that you otherwise could have reached out to, but you go one step further to actually look for uh, where they are um, in the deal stage and based on the custom business logic that you have at your company, uh, determine whether you should or should not reach out to, uh, to the prospects at these companies. So um, hopefully you found this helpful uh, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.